Well, hello again, quilty friends. Welcome back to my sewing room. And today is the tutorial for the apple block for week 16 in the scrapping. This is having us quilt along. Okay, so here's the apple block. And here's the book that we're working out of. We're working through all 32 of these blocks. And let's see, I've got the schedule right here, but I've also got the PDF. We're making this sampler quilt right here. So there's a free download for the setting. And so I always leave that in this video description. So please always read my descriptions. There's lots of links in there that are important. And so you can download this. It tells you the schedule, you know, shows you how to put the quilt together once all of the blocks are made even the backing there, okay? So again, scrappiness is having us quilt along. This is week 16. This is the apple block. And so a few things about the apple block. Let's see, let's put this here. The apple block is unfinished at 11 and a half by 11 and a half inches square. It's finished 11 and a half, uh, excuse me, 11 by 11 inches square, finished after it's sewn into the quilt. Uh, we are making one block, is all, of the apple block for the sampler quilt, which is right there. And yes, it has the borders on it because it's part of my one block wonders. And in the section, let's see, it is, um, again, we're just making one, one, but let's see, it's on page 114 in the book, so let's turn to that. Okay, so here's, here's the directions right here for the apple, apple block. Oh, it's on 110. I lied. 108. It's 114 is the quilt. Okay, so here's the block, and then it turns into the apple core block because we're making six of those if you're going to make the quilt itself that's in the book and not the sampler quilt. This quilt finishes at 76 by 85, okay? And we do 39 apples and then six apple core blocks. See how I offset these rows so the apples wouldn't be on top of each other. And then I did the apple core block that's narrower so that it would fit on the edge of those rows and I thought that was really fun. Um, let's see, for my okay so what so you know this whole book is about scraps right so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this quilt this is what I call the controlled scrappy quilt all right meaning it's all out of scraps out of my scrap bins but I'm only using pinks yellows reds and greens those colors and then browns for the stems. Okay, that's what I'm pulling out of my baskets. And so speaking of that, I'm gonna to talk to you about the cutting. Here's a close up of the apple core block. I pulled that out just so you could see it even though we're not using this for the sampler quilt. But that's what that looks like, okay? And so I've cut two blocks today and I'm gonna just sew two blocks so that you can see how I'm sewing them and how I do it. And so when I am sewing, when I'm cutting, excuse me, for the apples themselves for each half, I use my five inch basket of scrappy strips, okay? And then when I'm cutting for the leaves, I will use my either my two and a half inch, because that's what you need this way, or this is cut four inches or my five inch. So I can use either one and grab into my greens for there. And for my stems, I can use either my two and a half inch because that's how tall it is or one and a half inch because that's how wide those are. And then that's how I cut for the apples and it makes quick cutting. I just grab my baskets and pull my pinks, reds, yellows, and greens out of there when I cut the apples. Okay, and so let me put these over here. I don't want to let me put these over here out of the way for just a minute. And I'm going to pull this in 
this quilt in a little bit. Okay, sis, can you see that if I pull this up? I took this off the design wall just a minute ago so I could pull this in and show you. So you can see what I mean by just different reds, pinks, yellows, and I just pull two different of each that look, you know, have a good contrast between each other. But I wanted to show you that I used different backgrounds for this quilt, and I used four different backgrounds. And so what I did was I used a, this um, green background, this same green background, for the background in all of the red apples. Then I used this um, for my B cross stitch collection background for all the yellow ones. And then this is the stitch circle in green in my B backgrounds. These are the yellow circles in um, tiny circles in my B backgrounds. And I used this for the background of the pink apples and then this little daisy right here in pink I used that for the background in all of the green so that's again another controlled scrappy meaning yes I used four different backgrounds but they're controlled meaning I know where they're going to go in the quilt and that's planned for and then let me put this up so I can pull the bottom and then I did for the borders of this quilt in the book, there's four different background borders. And so I cut a piece from each of the four backgrounds. So you can see that's the bottom border. This green is on that side right there. The yellow is on the side. And then for the top, I used the pink. Okay. And then this is my wide back that I used for the backing. It was perfect for it because of the color. It's pink. And this is my pink patterns wide back, it's 108 inches wide, and I love that I don't have to piece the back for this. And then I went ahead and did a scrappy, here's my notes, let's see. So I did a scrappy binding for this. So when I was cutting these apples, I went ahead and cut strips for my um, binding, and that instruction is on page 212 of my book that I talked to you about my scrappy bindings and how I do that either on the bias or straight. I'm always pulling off threads. This I did not do on the bias, meaning I did not join them on the bias. You can. I do that a lot of the times, but I just thought this might be kind of fun to join just straight across right here. Okay. And so that's kind of a close-up look of these quilt and uh, these quilt blocks in here in this quilt. And let me set that aside so I can pull this stuff back in. And then I think I gave you all the information about that. And now we can go ahead and pull these back over here. And I'm going to set kind of things up. And I will show you how I sew two apple blocks. All right. So I laid these things out here from what I had cut. So I have things labeled here with my Sew Handy stickers. And you can sew across these. And they just stick on here, but they won't leave a residue. And you can iron on them as well, and it won't leave residue. So, and it just, there's a whole bunch of pages with different letters and numbers. And so that's what I use. And when I'm sewing two blocks at a time, I make sure that I label them in two different colors. So now, for instance, you can see that I separated the apples from the leaves and the stems from the backgrounds. But I know that this background, because it's in red stickers, goes with this apple and this leaf goes with this apple, the stem goes with this apple, and then the aqua ones go with the red apple. Okay, so that's just my explanation of that. I've got um, my Seam So Easy guide taped to my machine. I'm going to be using this line right here for the quarter inch accurate piecing. I am using my yellow featherweight, which is Miss Dolly, and let's start sewing. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take piece G and I'm going to take C right here so usually I you know I'll just have like there was two squares so I'll just put a sticker on the top one and I'm going to do an easy corner triangle on the top of piece G and how I do that is I line those up exactly from edge to edge and then I'm going to follow this line right here when I'm doing the easy corner triangles Meaning I'm going to start right here in the corner, and then I'm going to follow this corner all along that line, just like that. And that simply stops me from having to mark my squares. Um, so you can mark your squares if you want, or use the guide. 
my guide has uh, grid lines on it so that you can line it up with your sewing machine and do a straight line because it doesn't do any good to have like three lines like this if you don't know, make sure that it's straight coming from the needle because then, the, then your block will be off. And so I'm just gonna do the same thing on this G right here with its PC. And I'm just gonna keep going along here and doing easy corner triangles. And I'm going to be pressing just how it shows you in the book, because usually in the book it shows you to press away. But as you know, most of the time I press my seams open, but I wanted to be able to show you two ways. So let me show you the back of this block. Okay, and I pressed all my seams open here. And it's nice and flat. But I just want to show you that you can do both ways because it's definitely a preference. And so I'm going to be sewing these towards the easy corner triangles, which I do quite a bit as well, too. So I'm just going to continue sewing, and you can watch me sew and press and see how I form this block. And of course, this step-by-step -step that I'm doing here is exactly like in the book, so it's no different. But um, y'all have said that you like to watch me sew, how I sew my blocks, and so I'm just going to go ahead and do that.
Okay, so I've got this half sewn together, and that's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so you have the stem, easy corner triangle on this side, and the leaf on this side. But as I was sewing this one, I realized when I was showing you how I pin to line these up. See how I pinned that, and that lined up. But down here, I noticed that this does not line up, and obviously... One of these is too long or one of these is too short. So I'm gonna to have to measure this and recut one side and do the easy corner triangles. So I'm gonna go fix that and I'll be right back. All right, so I fixed this. What had happened is I had done, this half was a quarter of an inch too long. I had cut this a quarter of an inch too long. So what I did was just cut a quarter of an inch off and then redid these easy corner triangles by cutting new ones and doing them, okay? And I had left the old ones on because I wanted to be able to see the corners. I probably should have shown you that. Anyway, so I left the old ones on so that I had a corner to line up, if that makes sense, when you go to, okay, so pretend I had already trimmed this off, then I couldn't put a new one on because I had already trimmed that off. So I left it on, put the new one on it, and sewed because it wasn't on the same seam because the fabric was now shorter. And then I trimmed it off. And so that's what I did with these two. The top stayed exactly the same. The width was correct. And so now I'm just finishing sewing these two up with the pin in here. So these pins right here, I just stick like this. One stick, not like this. I just poke them in to hold it on each side of the seam. And then I just sew slowly, and you can sew over those pins or you can take it out. But I made it so those pins are thin enough that you can just sew right over them. And then just take them out. And that's how I use my double pins when I want things to line up there. So now those are the correct size. They're both the same length. And I went ahead and put this one under the clapper. Press that. I can't remember if I did that while we were filming or not. But anyway, so that's what that looks like. Let me take those off. And then I'm going to go ahead and press this one. Now, I do press this one open. Because even though I've been pressing towards the easy corner triangles on all of these, I don't want that bulky seam right there. And so I'm just going to go ahead... When I'm pressing open, I kind of make sure it's pulled apart. So I'm getting all the way open here. And I like to use my seam roller here right on these areas. And then I just go ahead and press it and then put clappers on it, okay? And so, now what we're going to do is this top section across here is we're going to take the leaf that goes with that and we're just simply going to sew these two halves together using the quarter inch seam allowance here. I'm going to push this farther over. It's too far away for me sometimes when I'm trying to film so I like to get up close and personal usually. Okay. So, once again, I made a little mistake while we were filming, but that's okay, <laughs> right? I mean, it goes to show you all my mistakes. If I had cut this too short instead of too long, then I would have had to do the whole piece all over again, meaning obviously cutting this new piece and all four easy corner triangles. But luckily, it was just a little bit too long, so I could fix that. And then here, I'm just going to set these, and I'm going to press this towards... Or, you know what, I'm going to press this one open just because, see the seams we've got there? I just think it's going to be better to press open. I have a hard time 
deciding if I want to press one way or the other when they both have a seam. So that's most of the time when I decide to press open and when they're very small blocks and has a lot of seams. This roller just assures that I have it open all the way and then again I'll even pull like this a little bit and just make sure it's completely open and sometimes you can even turn it to the other side just to make sure it's completely open especially when you're doing little narrow seams like this you want to make sure it's open all the way so you don't get little pleats in there and then your block won't be accurate okay now we're just gonna let those cool for a minute and then I'm going to just sew them across the top here and then I'll be right back all right so now I'm back here and I'm, I pressed these two different ways so that you could see so this yellow block as you can see I pressed towards the apple so you can see what that looks like you can see it's kind of like a little ridge because you know the bulk of the seams all right and then after <laughs> I'm sure you saw that yes, I made yet another classic mistake and turned this leaf around here. So anyway, so we had to stop filming so I could fix it and so that we could stop laughing, actually. And so anyway, so I turned that around, re that correctly, and I pressed this one open. So I wanted you to be able to see, I don't know, I just thought I'd press because I had two blocks to show two different ways. So you can definitely see the ridge there and how this is flat. And then you're like, well, when you quilt it in a quilt, what difference does that make? Well, it, you know, that it couldn't, you know, you, you may not even be able to tell, and it may not make a difference. I just want you to see that this also helps in accuracy because this obviously opens the block up more to lie flat. And this, if there's a ridge here, that's gonna make this just become just a little teeny bit shorter. So, you know, that's kind of the difference. And again, this is what this one looks like. Pressed open completely. And how much flatter that is too. So that's just that little lesson in that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, here, let's bring these over here, sis. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put these borders on afterwards and then I'll take a picture and show you at the end. But we all know what a block looks like. With the borders on, I will put the sides first and then top and bottom last, and I will press those towards the border. But at this point, before I put the borders on is where I like to check my blocks. Let me slide this over a little bit just so that I can show you. Um, so at this point, they should measure nine and a half inches square. And so I just grabbed my trim it to show you that that this is what I do before I put the borders on. And I just lay it on here. Now this is really nice because this center line right here, you just lay it right here on the seams this way. And you can see if you've got any to trim off, like over here, can you see on this side, just a little bit. I could trim just a little bit off of there. And so that's what I do with my trim it rulers. And then I'll sew the borders on and press them away. And like I say, I'll go ahead and show you at the end. And Cassidy thinks we need to put my little blooper at the end when I was messing up, making all these mistakes. Or when I say all these, was there two mistakes? But still, you know. But, you know, let me know if you think I should have left those mistakes in or just totally edited it and pretend like it never happened. But, you know, I can't really do that because that's a normal day of sewing for anyone, right? We always make mistakes, but there's ways to fix them. And so this is keeping it real, right? All right, so let's talk about the next week that's going to be happening is, so we are going to talk about the Blossom Block next. Well, we're not going to talk about it because I already did that tutorial. So that was in part of my Sew Your Stash series, and also it was one of my Socialites blocks for last year. So that tutorial is already on here for the Blossom Block. And so the next two is the checkerboard and the checkerboard star. 
And because both of them are about checkerboards and I did the checkerboards in two different ways, I'm going to combine that video next and talk about the two different ways to make checkerboards. And then the one after that, you know, we're just continuing on to Grandma's Donut. I have not made a video out of Grandma's Donut, so I'll be doing that, you know, and we'll just continue on from there. But I'll go ahead and leave a link for the Blossom Block so that next week you can go ahead and click on that link from here next week so that you can watch that video. And so I hope you enjoyed today's video. You know, mistakes or no mistakes. Uh, please leave me comments. I appreciate you subscribing to my channel and liking my channel. I'm having so much fun with this, you know, this quilt along and my uh, Scrappiness is Happiness book. And I hope you are too. And so I'll chat with you later. It's not going to match up at the bottom. Something crap. Something's off. This is off by a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to sew it. And this one I pressed open. Right there were a lot of seams. Oh.